This week has brought a significant escalation of conflict in the Middle East beyond the Gaza war. Indeed, the most recent attacks by different sides could be the first steps towards the much feared regional conflagration. At the same time, they may turn out to be helpful to concentrate people's minds. So let's unpack. First, there is much more to the term regional escalation than the so-called three evil age, Hamas, Hezbollah and the Houthis. Often lumped together as Iran's proxies, we know by now that they have their own goals and grievances. Simply assuming that they are tools at Tehran's disposal may be politically opportune, but is also analytically wrong. Sure, they receive support from and collaborate with Iran, yet they also have their own agendas. Disregarding these will lead to ineffective policies. What is more, these groups' actual agency works the other way around too. Because Tehran doesn't control them, it also cannot fully constrain them when it wants to issue further escalation. Because if the three months following Hamas' terror attack in Israel have shown anything, it is that while all actors, state and non-state alike, try to use the volatile situation for their own gains, regional powers like Iran and Saudi Arabia are not interested in the widening of the conflict. Now there is Pakistan and Jaish al-Adl, a little-known separatist Islamist group operating on both sides of the porous border with Iran. Which leads me to my second point. There is much more to Iran than the nuclear file, internal repression or the quest for regional dominance. As it happens, Iran's recent strikes against this militant group came on the heels of two terrorist attacks in its southeastern provinces, killing over 100 people. In fact, terrorist incidents have increased in both Iran and Pakistan after the Taliban takeover in neighboring Afghanistan in 2021. Yet Iran's instabilities go further than terrorism. Especially peripheral regions like Sistan Baluchistan in the east or the Kurdish and Arab parts in the west have faced long-standing neglect from the central government, coupled with outright ethnic and religious discrimination. Then there is sectarian strife, often stoked by outside actors and regular crime like drug trafficking and weapon smuggling. Make no mistake, the Islamic Republic of Iran is a thoroughly repressive, inhuman, misogynist regime that ought to be gone rather sooner than later. The woman life freedom uprising has shown how little legitimacy and support it has with the Iranian people. Alas, the continuing brutal crackdown also demonstrates the leadership's grip on the country. Still, seeing Iran only in black or white, good versus evil terms misses the bigger picture and therefore will again lead to bad policies. Any long-term strategy will therefore have to consider the complex situation on the ground, whether in Iran or the broader region. This includes in particular the actual demands of people living there. They cannot wish for the regional conflagration that is so easily talked about from afar because they would be at the receiving end of the next missile strike.